Welcome back. So, this is, I keep saying this, this is, this is a lot of fun. What we're going to do now is we're going to try to exploit the calculations that we've been doing. Let me just remind you, you know, we came up with this uh, cool expression that allowed us to work out the, the free energy that would be lost, I guess is the way I might put it if we permitted the bicoid gradient or some other gradient to uh, to smooth itself out and so what we're going to do is we're going to exploit this we're going to compute this in the context of the drosophila bicoid gradient and then we're going to examine how much energy is invested in order to maintain that steady state gradient without making a comment at the moment as to whether or not steady state gradients are the mechanism of developmental patterning. Uh, we talked about positional information earlier. I, I want to call your attention to work from Nama Barkai at the Weitzman, um, which builds on the thing I mentioned earlier about Francis Crick even trying to look at the time scale for setting up a gradient. Anyway, we're, we're going to assume that it's steady state, and then we're going to work out how much free energy needs to be invested to keep it in steady state. So the picture I have in mind um, is given by this somewhat, I don't know, maybe slightly silly cartoon where, you know, I'm imagining that there's a factory over here in the anterior end of the embryo. That's because mom has left behind some mRNA. The factory is basically shooting out proteins at a rate, which I'm going to call J0. That's a flux. So that's number of proteins per area per time. And so we can compute the rate at which proteins are produced by taking that flux times an effective area. We'll say a little bit about that. And then we can, from that, we can compute the energy cost for that production by using the number of proteins produced per second times the cost per protein. Um, similarly, we can work out the protein degradation cost, the cost to degrade the proteins. That's going to be given by this expression. And then we can integrate that over all x's to figure out the total degradation cost. And I can foreshadow what's going to happen here is that what we're going to find is that the, the cost to maintain the gradient is uh, the power, let me put it that way, the power is a factor of, uh, of 100,000 greater than the power required to, to, uh, that would be liberated by letting, relaxing the gradient. So it's uh, really quite a huge disparity. So, so what are we about? Um, we're uh, Topic number one is we want to compute the free energy release rate, I guess maybe it's what I can call it, if the Bicoid gradient is allowed to relax. And you know, you'll, you'll see that I wrote this dg by dt and I said that was minus D times KVT. And then I'm just going to call it A, integral from 0 to L, DX of 1 over C, DC by DX, quantity squared. So if we go back up here, uh, this, is, this is what we derived. So my only change relative to this expression is the integral over DY, DZ I've replaced with A. I'm not going to worry about the perpendicular direction. Okay, so for bicoid, you know, we I want you to remember that bicoid at x is equal to bicoid of zero e to the minus x over lambda. That means that d bicoid by dx is equal to minus bicoid zero over lambda e to the minus x over lambda. And so that tells me that dg by dt is equal to minus dkbta. And then I'm going to have a 1 over c. So, you know, if I, if I take that, that's going to give me a, a, well, first of all, let me write my integral, 0 to l dx. And now I'm going to be kind of pedantic about it. So. 1 over c I can rewrite as e to the x over lambda over bicoid 0. So that's this is the 1 over c term. And then the derivative term is going to give me a bicoid 0 squared 
it's going to give me a lambda squared. It's going to give me an e to the minus x over lambda. And I have a factor 2 up there because it's squared. So e to the minus 2x over lambda. And that's the dc by dx squared term. So I can rewrite this as minus d k b t a and then integral 0 to L of bicoid 0 over lambda squared and then e to the minus x over lambda dx. And this thing is uh, let's see let's just keep going so um, this I can rewrite as minus d k b t a bicoid 0 over lambda squared and then uh, I'm going to multiply by a, a minus lambda and then I have integral 0 to Uh, minus L over lambda e to the u du and this thing leaves me with a, um, um, 1 minus e to the minus L over lambda and also a minus sign in front. So um, I'm going to neglect this. So neglect this Thing. And so what I'm left with is minus d k b t a bicoid 0 over lambda. Let's see if that uh, makes sense in terms of units. So, so let's see. So this is going to be uh, k b t is energy. Uh, so that's joules. And then D is uh, micron squared per second. A is micron squared. Bicoid zero is number over microns cubed. And then lambda downstairs is microns. So uh, yeah, so that, that leaves me with joules per second. So that looks good. So that's our that's our energy release rate, and let's let's actually plug in some numbers. So this is going to be equal to uh, now I'm gonna I've got my minus sign, I've got kBT, those are the units, and then uh, of energy, and then let's let's just start plugging in things. So we have 10 microns squared per second. That's our d, and I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take. 7,000 microns squared as the effective cross-sectional area. Um, that's basically because I'm looking at an annulus of material. Bicoid zero is 60 over microns cubed. And then lambda is 100 microns. And so Yeah, so I'm left with um, kBT per second as my units, which is good. That, that seems like a good set of units for us to use. And then uh, 7 times 6 gives me a 42. And then so these guys are gone. And then I've got 10 to the 4, 10 to the 5. So this is 10 to the 3. So this, this is roughly uh, 4 minus 4,000 kBTs per second. So that's what we found for the free energy that would be liberated by letting the gradient run itself out. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to I want to work out the the energy cost to maintain that gradient. Okay. So how do I think about that? Well, as I already mentioned, Mom left some mRNA, and that mRNA is translated. And there's a number of different ways to go after this question of uh, the, what J0 is, which is the flux at the anterior end. 
Um, the way that I'm going to think about this is you know, this thing in cross section, I'm going to think of it as an annulus like this. And this inner radius is 50 microns, and maybe the outer radius is 70 microns. For the fly experts, you know, I, I'm just sort of winging it here. You know, obviously the, the, it's not a constant cross-section object and on the anterior end it's actually like a little dome and so on and so I, I'm, just, I'm just giving myself an order of magnitude number. So this, this thing gives me around 7,000 microns squared, something like that. It's more like 7,500 but, but it doesn't matter. And, um, and then you know, that tells me that the, um, that tells me that the Say the rate, the rate of the, the cost associated with protein production is the number of proteins produced per second times the cost per individual protein. So, um, so let's let's try to compute those things. So, first of all, uh, J the flux is minus d d bicoid of x by dx. And that's going to be equal to, we just did this, this is, this is going to be equal to minus d, and then uh, I'm going to have a plus sign. Well, okay, no, I, should, I shouldn't do this in my head, I should show you. So we already, we already did d bicoid by dx, so let me grab that. It's right here. So I paste this. Um, and what I'm left with is that J is equal to D bicoid zero over lambda. This is evaluated at X equals zero. So what does that leave us with? That gives us a 10 micron squared per second, 60 per micron cubed. I'm using the fact that bicoid zero is 60 nanomolar or something like this. Okay, that's, that's what I'm using there. And then divided by 100, um, microns. So this gives me 600 divided, you know, it's like six proteins per uh, micron squared per second. So that's what J is. And or I say that's that's J zero. And so dn by dt it's going to be given by J0 times A effective. So you know, I'm saying six proteins per micron squared per second, and then times, um, times 7,000 microns squared is my effective area. So this gives me uh, 42,000 proteins per second or something like that and what's the cost per protein so dg by dt per protein is going to be j0 a effective but then times the cost per protein which i can rewrite as j0 a effective and then number of amino acids per protein uh, times uh, let's call it four ATPs and the reason I say that is that you'll recall in translation there it's four ATP equivalents per peptide bond so you know this gives me 42,000 proteins per second times few times 10 to the 2 amino acids per protein times uh, 80 kT per amino acid. That's just four, four ATPs, which is 20 and 20 kBTs per amino per ATP. That gives me 80 kBTs. And so if I work all this out, um, let's see. So I've got four times 10 to the four times uh, F times 80 is 250. That seems good. So that gives, gets rid of the F and the 80. Uh, and then I have left what? Uh, times 10 to the 2. 4 times 250, and this is all in kBTs per second. 
So 4 times 250 is 1,000. And then I have times 10 to the 4th, times 10 to the 2, which gives me roughly 10 to the 9th KBTs per second. And that's exactly what I advertised earlier, which is that the cost of the protein production dwarfs the, the free energy that would be liberated by letting the gradient relax. We can similarly evaluate, okay, take a look at the expression up here. We can similarly evaluate the degradation rate, and I'm not going to do this exercise, I leave it for you, but, um, but what you see is that you know, the number of proteins being degraded at a given plane, and so if I look at this plane of width delta x up here, well, it's the rate of degradation times the cross-sectional area times the concentration uh, times the width of the sliver. So if I want to know the total degradation rate, what do I do? I integrate over all the proteins that are degraded, and I attribute to each such degradation event an energy epsilon d. And, you know, one, one estimate for the degradation cost is you could say it's basically the cost, cost to disassemble all the, the peptide bonds, so it would be basically the same thing. So what do I conclude? What was the point of all this? Okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm basically going to stop here, but what I'm telling you is that uh, what we found is that the, the free energy that would be liberated by just permitting the, the bicoid gradient or some gradient to relax is given by roughly, you know, 5,000, 10,000 kBTs per second. So 10 to the, let's call it 10 to the uh, 4. And we found that the, the cost invested in protein production in, the, in making the bicoid gradient is of, of this five orders of magnitude higher. And this brings me back to this figure that I showed earlier, which I think is a fun one, which is, um, which is that you know we can estimate the minimum free energy that needs to be deposited to keep this thing in steady state, which is basically the opposite sign of this. And yet, what we're finding is that you know it's it's uh, vastly more costly to do that than uh, than that minimum value. So this is, this is kind of the end of our first example of life as defiance and, you know, the theme that I'm trying to convey and I'm trying to do it with toy models. And, you know, this is, a, this is kind of a first run on this is trying to figure out, like, what would be the, the right pedagogical way to talk about it. And when I say pedagogical, I don't mean, you know, for the purposes of a course. I mean it for all of us that are sitting around thinking about the field. You know, there's very sophisticated people doing very sophisticated things that understand all this stuff way, way better than I do. But it's in a certain sense unapproachable. And what I'm trying to do is trying to find a way to, to sort of boil off all the fat and, and put it down to its essences. And I think that what, what I've shown you in these last few vignettes is at least going to give you an impression of what the factors are that are in play. So there's this natural bleeding off of gradients. And I, you know, I love this notion of the proton waterfall or the concentration gradient waterfall. And that waterfall can be used to turn the turbines of the cell. And so what I'm saying is that you know, the running down of such a gradient is, um, it, we, we figured out how much energy that's worth and that's, that's cool. And then what we did is we estimated on the basis of what we know about the establishment of at least a developmental gradient, how much it costs. And the answer is that it costs a lot more than you can harvest it for. And you know, there's, there's deeper issues to think about, about the, the cell's optimality or it's the cell's, how much the cell cares about expenditure of energy. Okay, so that's what I have.